Now, look, it's always bad to hear about injuries, especially to college kids, of course. Yeah. But Stephen A. Smith, this one is particularly disheartening because we are two weeks into the season, and one of the top NBA prospects in the country goes down potentially with a season-ending injury, a knee injury. That's a killer. I couldn't agree more. When I heard he was carried off the floor today, all you can do is find yourself hoping that he'll make it back. That's the bottom line. But my heart goes out to him because I didn't expect this. This is a devastating injury. It's never good to have something like this happen to you. The teen doctor broke the news. Torn ACL, sprained MCL, and a torn meniscus. Surgery was scheduled, but your game will likely never be the same. At the 2016 NBA draft, your name is still mentioned. Not as a prospect, but as a cautionary tale. Now, there's another huge story in this year's draft. A record number of underclassmen, 30 of them, undrafted. And I hope, anyway, that this is a lesson. This serves as an example to college players. I'm not talking about the ones who are genuinely one and duns, the guys you know are going to be lottery picks. I mean the rest of them. The not, they're not sure shots. You're not sure they're going to be lottery picks. Don't just use the college system for a year thinking you're going to bounce. It doesn't work oh, like please, that. Please. If you don't have the talent, it doesn't work. you got to be cultivated please, in the system. Please, please, There you go again with your blanket generalizations. You know how you are, oh, Max, the war is me. Oh, my Lord, I can't, I can't take it. I just can't take it. It's a case-by-case -case basis. You can't just blanketly decide this should not be one and done, or this should be one and done. you got to go on a case-by-case -case basis. Some dudes deserve to be one and done. Some people don't. It's on a case-by-case -case right. basis. And that is my point. Thank you for making it for me. Every kid thinks they're the exception to the rule. And members of the media like, ahem, Stephen A. Smith, are encouraging these kids to come out early. Look, Max, bottom line is this. You got to take this into consideration. You had two dudes. They were called the Height Brothers. Now, you had Nick Howard. This kid had a lot of promise. What does he do? He goes to college. Very uneventful first year, no doubt. The second year, he was pretty good. Here's the problem. The NBA, it's not about pretty good. You need to be great on the collegiate level, on the prep level, in summer leagues and what have you, in order for you to get the stature that you deserve. That's the bottom line. If pretty good ain't good enough to That's be that That's my point. NBA. That's How is exactly it my Let point. Let me finish. Let me finish. There's another example. I did say the Hype Brothers. I wasn't talking about one individual. I was talking about two. What happens? One and done in a different way. One year, one ACL injury later, and look where he's at now. His future is clear clearly uncertain. So you got to take advantage of that opportunity because you never know when an injury is going to cost you everything. Stephen A., listen to yourself. Let's listen to yourself for a second. You give one argument for why a kid should come out early, a one-and-done situation. I can give you 30 arguments this morning alone why they should stay in school. And now you have to wonder what a kid like Nick Howard, who has given up his college eligibility, does next. What does he do next? First of all, don't sweat the technique. The argument, or one argument, as long as it's strong enough, that's all that matters. That's number one. Number two, the Hype Brothers was something special. What they really, really need to do, and I'm going to tell you what they need to do, Mac. They need to get back to playing together. And my sources are telling me the ACL injury has been completely healed. So go on a pro-am circuit. Go in summer leagues. Do what you got to do to get back on the court together to remind everybody of what you want to work. Because once you pull that off, the sky's the limit. That's what they need to do. Get back to playing playing ball together, because when people see what you can do as one, the other arguments don't really matter. Like I said, don't sweat the technique. Mama Mave is old. Mama, they try my patience. Is gone. Who is left to save us? We mourn. I'm praying for my neighbors. They say the devil's at work and is calling favors. You say I'm dangerous. I speak for the nameless. I fly with the vultures. I be with them bangers. If change don't come, then the change won't come. If the bands make them dance, then the rain gon' come. Am I passing up to the light? Look into your eyes.
This is New York City, the mecca of basketball. The original Rucker League began here in 1947. Nine years later, the tournament found a permanent home uptown at PS 156 Playground. Those early Rucker days showcased talents like Lou Alcindor, Wilt the Stilt, and Earl the Pearl. It's also where Julius Irving became the doctor. In 1974, the park was respectfully renamed Holcomb Rucker Park in honor of the tournament founder. Now, many have influenced the growth of the Rucker since, but none more heavily than the late great Greg Marius, founder of the EBC. Many would argue that the Ruck is the birthplace of true street ball and the crossover dribble. Considering New York City's penchant for flashy guard play, there are few who can challenge that. After the legendary exploits of Rucker alumni like Rod Strickland, Rafer Austin, and Kyrie Irving, it goes without saying that getting crossed up or banged on can happen to anybody at any given moment here. It's no wonder that this unassuming uptown playground has become the most widely recognized streetball court in the world. Rucker Park, Harlem.